Today, Nicosia is the last divided European capital. Its streets come to dead ends created by concrete and barbed wire, by fears and by guilt. It's for these reasons that the residents of Nicosia within the walls gradually abandoned the old town after the 1974 Turkish invasion and settled outside in a new and modern city. A large part of the old town remains silent to this day, living through legends which rise up through each and every stone. The old churches speak of Byzantine emperors, the ruined palaces of Frankish kings, the minarets and kiosks of Ottoman pashas, the stone-built mansions of the Victorian age, and the stately homes with shaded courtyards of lords and ladies. Circular Venetian walls featuring three gates and eleven bastions enclose within them the old town. The three gates of Kyrenia, Paphos and Famagusta formed the only channels through which the residents of the town could come into contact with the outside world. The gates had heavy wooden iron sheathed doors which secured the town from undesirable elements. The walls were built by the Venetians in 1567, but barely three years had passed when, in 1570, a lengthy siege led to the surrender of Nicosia to the Ottomans. Famagusta Gate is today used for cultural purposes and acts as host to numerous exhibitions, lectures, theatrical performances and other cultural events. Its restoration was carried out by the Nicosia Municipality, which also received the Europa Nostra Award for its successful undertaking in protecting and preserving European heritage and culture. The medieval Cathedral of Santa Sofia is a shining example of Gothic architecture. It was built in 1326 and many were the Frankish kings crowned and buried here. It's said that when Lala Mustafa Pasha, the Ottoman conqueror of Nicosia, first set foot in the town, he went straight to the church of Santa Sophia in order to pray in the direction of Mecca. From that day in the year 1570, the church was turned into a mosque and remains so to this day. In the old town, almost all the houses have kiosks and balconies. Their main feature, however, are the archways. It's believed that the sharp apex arches derive from Frankish and Venetian models. Cypriot builders quickly assimilated this technique, constructing arches in almost all houses for climatological reasons. Another characteristic of the old houses are the interior courtyards, which, in addition to the protection offered to the family, housed the laundry room, the pantry and the kitchen. An integral feature of a house's front door was a striking cast-iron knocker in a variety of shapes. In 1984, the then mayor of Nicosia, Lelos Dimitriadis, thought up the Nicosia Master Plan, which envisioned revitalizing the divided capital and once again bringing visitors and wealth to the old town. The plan was of a long-term character and addressed not only the Greek side of Nicosia, but a reunified town. Streets and sidewalks were repaved, dilapidated and derelict buildings renovated, and traders and merchants were given incentives so that the old town would once again breathe life. The Laiki Gitonia, as it was named, which translates roughly into folk neighborhood in English, was the first area restored. And the plan did bear fruit. In 1988, and to everybody's joy, Laiki Gitonia received the first prize from the International Federation of Journalists and Travel Writers as the most noteworthy tourism-related project in the world. 
The house of Dragoman Hachiorgakis Cornesios is one of the oldest mansions of Nicosia and the most impressive example of late 18th century Ottoman architecture. The entire house is built of local sandstone, while its two street-facing aspects, with their iron latticed openings, accentuate its fortress-like character. What truly impresses the visitor, however, is the pleasant ambience of its interior spaces, which come into stark contrast with the exterior fortress-like appearance. Next to the Dragoman's House, one comes across the Archbishopric and the Folk Art Museum, which is an extremely interesting place for those wishing to familiarize themselves with the history of Cyprus's folk art and handicrafts. The Archaeological Museum portrays the civilization of the island from its very beginnings in 9000 BC to the Byzantine period. Here, the visitor can see prehistoric exhibits, Neolithic tools and vessels, copper and bronze age weapons, statues, coins, and items of jewelry from all periods of the island's history. Today's presidential palace was known in British colonial times as Government House and was the seat of the Commissioner of the Crown a fact attested to by the coat of arms which still adorns the main entrance. The primary factor taken into account during its building was the need for the building to conform to the island's own architectural style. Hence, local construction materials were used. The carved archways in the back of the presidential palace were relocated there in 1909, having been transferred from the old Gothic church of St. Nicholas. The architectural sites offered by Nicosia, however, are by no means limited to its museums and old buildings. Nicosia today is a thoroughly contemporary European city with all the characteristic features of a modern-day capital. As we speak, Nicosia dreams more than ever before that prior to May 2004, when Cyprus is set to become a full-fledged member of the European Union, its roads will cease to be split in two, that its roads will no longer come to an abrupt end against concrete and barbed wire roadblocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah.